Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online regulation EVGC ladder in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and provide live commentary as I go. In this video, I'm going to be featuring a team that dominated the October Ranked Ladder. This team finished number 2 and number 6 at the end of the ranked season, and it drew my attention because it has Sneasler. Sneasler is in a unique spot in the meta right now. You actually have really good super effective coverage into so many Pokemon in the format, such as Rillaboom as well as Ogre Pond and Heatran, and you're able to deal massive amounts of damage. The team is generally designed around using Sneasler in the late game, and you have pairs like Indity plus Armourouge, this is a Focus Sash weak armor Armourouge set with Endure and Wide Guard, Choice Scarf Urshifu which can activate that weak armor immediately as you pivot into Indity, and sets like Poison Terra, Life Orb, Champau, and Sharp Beak Tornadus with Substitute. This team just does so much damage, it has so many different combinations that you can work with, and there's a reason why it did so well on the online ladder last season, so I'm really excited to feature it. As always, I'll do a quick breakdown of the team, but if you want to just skip to the battles, check out the timestamps down below, and thanks so much as always for joining me. If you enjoy, would really appreciate it if you consider leaving a like in the video or subscribing to the channel, it really helps out a ton. Before we get started, today's video is sponsored by FlexiSpot. FlexiSpot makes awesome standing desks. They offer a variety of desks that you can customize with your preferred color, size, and frame. The desk that I have conveniently comes with a drawer, which I can use to store on my stuff so my desktop doesn't get too cluttered. It also has a keypad, which comes with a USB charging port. This particular desk has a bamboo top, which is environmentally friendly and durable. It's super easy to adjust the height of the table using the control pad. The pad offers a variety of settings, and within a matter of seconds, you can go from a sitting desk to a standing desk. As someone who spends a lot of time working in front of a computer and at home, the FlexiSpot desk is a major improvement over my previous office desk. I often find that standing up with the desk helps me sharpen up and be more productive, improving my overall workflow. I genuinely love my FlexiSpot desk, and I really appreciate them for supporting the channel. If you're interested, check out the link and code below to get your very own desk, and a huge thank you once again to FlexiSpot for sponsoring today's video. Breaking things down, as always, Rental, Pace, and Team Creator are linked down in the description below, and question of the day, I want to know what your favorite song is at the moment as someone who's always looking for new music suggestions. I was immediately drawn to this team because it finished number 2 and number 6 in the ranked season, and it features Sneasler, which is a Pokemon that very few people use. So of course I want to start off by talking about Sneasler. Sneasler is one of the fastest Pokemon in the format, and when you combine it with Umburden plus Psychic Seed and the Psychic Train from Indidi, this thing can just outpace practically everything if your opponent doesn't have speed control on their side of the field. The downside of Sneasler is that even with such a good base attack stat, it's difficult to pick up big one-hit knockouts because so many Pokemon in the format are just quite bulky. So, one of the downsides is people often think about leading Sneasler and Indity, which is definitely a viable lead combo with this team, but of course, with this lead combo, you might struggle to actually pick up damage quickly, and with Intimidates onto Sneasler, you often feel compelled to switch out, but then that gets rid of the Unburden boost, which feels really bad. Sneasler has really good coverage behind Poison, Fighting, and Rock, and you've got Rock Terra Rock Slide, which makes this a really effective late game closer, because you can just spam Rock Slide, outpace your opponent, deal massive amounts of damage, and potentially get flinches along the way as well. Poison in particular is really nice in a format where Fairy Terra is still fairly common, and you have Pokemon like Rillaboom as well as Ogre Palm, which are just, of course, weak to it. So this Sneezer, of course, is enabled by Indity, which sets up the Psychic Terrain here. You've got a Rocky Helmet Water Terra set, which of course is really good, especially against Urshifu, and Rocky Helmet is just valuable in breaking through Focus Sashes, for example. Fairly straightforward moveset with Follow Me, Psy Shock, Helping Hand, and Protect. The main thing to call out here is that you've got Psy Shock, which is valuable against something like Assault Vest Pokemon, especially Assault Vest Iron Hands. Now, Sneasler and Indity is a strong combo, but it's actually not the default go-to lead with this team. One of the best leads with this team is actually Urshifu, Rapid Strike, plus Armor Rouge. This Armor Rouge is a weak armor set. Weak armor, Armor Rouge has become a lot more common, I feel like, in the last month, month and a half of this format, and the main idea is that you just outpace your opponent, and in best of one play, if your opponent hasn't seen this team, they often won't necessarily immediately think about weak armor either. As you'll notice, this Armor Rouge has a unique set because you've got your double damage moves and expanding force and armor cannon, but you also have Endure and Wide Guard. 
The idea is that Endura can allow Armorous to get that weak armor activated, you get a speed boost, and then you can outpace your opponents afterwards. And of course, it just allows Armorous to survive for longer periods of time. And Wide Guard is just one of the best moves in the format, and probably one of the least, un like, most underplayed moves in the format right now. Think about all the spread moves that exist. Bleak Windstorm from Tornadus, Earthquake slash Rockside from Landorus, Make It Rain from Golden Go, just to name a couple, Dazzling Gleam from Fluttermane. Being able to Wide Guard and protect yourself against all of those is such a big deal, and I found that a single good Wide Guard with this team can completely swing the momentum into your favor. The idea behind Armor Rouge is that with the weak armor, there, your opponent often will just give you speed boosts, which is really nice, but you can also lead something like Urshifu plus Armor Rouge. What this allows you to do is go for a U-turn into Armor Rouge, activate that weak armor immediately, Urshifu can pivot into Indity, which sets up Psychic Terrain, and then Armor Rouge can just click Expanding Force and deal large amounts of damage immediately. And then if they don't knock out Armor Rouge on the first turn, the next turn you have a really fast Pokemon with Terrain Control, and you can go for something like Helping Hand plus Expanding Force to just quickly clean through your opponent's team. Urshifu, of course, is just one of the best Pokemon in the format, continues to be the case. You're often going to be using U-Turn in the early game to enable Armor Rouge, but Close Combat and Surging Strikes, of course, are both just incredible moves. And I've had a lot of games where Urshifu just picks up a knockout on turn one, and that just opens the game wide open for us. Now, one of the main ways you can play with this team is leading Urshifu plus Armor Rouge, pivoting it in ED once you replace Urshifu, and then using Sneasler to close out the game. However, you, of course, have Champau and Tornadus on this team as well. This is a Life Orb Poison Terra Champau that's max speed, so this is really nice because it gives you an edge against most Flutter mains, which I feel like generally don't run Timid max speed anymore, and you have Poison Terra with Ice Cold Crash and Crunch. So the idea is with Life Orb you just deal massive amounts of damage, and the Life Orb goes such a long way because most things are EV to survive Champau Ice Cold Crash without Life Orb, you add Life Orb to a mix and you can just turn those into very secure knockouts most of the time. Ice Shard exists on this set, which I think is really interesting. I haven't really clicked it that much, but it just gives you a priority attack like your opponents generally won't anticipate. Really valuable into things that are weak to ice, such as Tornadus, as well as Rillaboom, for example, and just having priority ice can catch opposing teams off guard. The final Pokemon is Tornadus, and Tornadus, Champau, Urshifu, these are all really common Pokemon in the format right now, but Champau is already built a little bit differently with the Poison Terra Life Orb Ice Shard combination, and Tornadus is actually a little bit unique here as well because you've got Sharp Beak, and you're actually just max speed, max special attack, there is no bulk on this Tornadus. The Tornadus is also running Substitute as well as Protect. A lot of times you'll see moves like Icy Wind, maybe a weather move like Rain Dance or Sunny Day. Uh, Protect, I feel like, sometimes is even dropped. But Sub and Protect is really nice because you're able to potentially capitalize off passive positions, and I cannot express how much damage Sharp Beak plus Bleak Wind Storm does. Few people are used to that amount of damage output from Tornadus because most people expect a lot of bulk on Tornadus and as a result not as much special attack investment, but this combination allows you to just really demolish through teams and deal like over 50% to so many Pokemon in the format. And let's not forget about how many Pokemon in the format right now are weak to flying, right? You've got things like Rillaboom, you've got things like Amoongus and Ogre Pond as well. So this Tornadus can just stick on the field and deal so much damage super, super quickly. So of course you can consider leads like Tornadus Champau, Tornadus Urshifu, Urshifu Champau. These all do so much damage as well. The main thing to think about is if you want to bring Armor Rouge or Sneasler, you probably want Indity in the mix since you want to figure out, okay, if I'm bringing one of these two and I'm bringing Indity as well, which two of the four remaining Pokemon do I want to bring, right? So the default mode that I generally think about is like Urshifu plus Armor Rouge with Indity and Sneasler in the back. You, of course, could go with Indity plus Sneasler as well. And the team creator for this actually wrote a team report in Japanese. So if you want to check it out, I'll link it down in the description below. And they suggest some combinations here. So this is kind of the default mode that I was talking about. This is a suggested combination of Sneasler and Indity with Champau in the back, Armor Rouge plus Champau with Indity and Sneasler in the back, uh, and then you can you can see all the different combinations here, right? So these are kind of the go-to modes, but uh, as you can see here, none of these modes actually really mention Tornadus as a lead, and I found that sometimes leading Tornadus is just effective if I feel like I can get a lot of value off Bleak Windstorm in the early game, as well as just early Tailwinds. So that's a quick breakdown of the team, now let's highlight some weaknesses. So in terms of weaknesses, the first thing I run into that's giving me a lot of trouble is just Trick Room in general. This team relies on outspeeding your opponent and has really fast Pokemon and ways to enable your speed even further, but if your opponent sets up Trick Room, that completely turns everything around. So I've really struggled against teams that just set up Trick Room immediately and bring out a Trick Room Sweeper and can overwhelm you with offense. That's not to say that you just automatically lose against Trick Room. You do have support against it, like the Wide Guard and Endure. A lot of Trick Room teams do use spread moves, so Wide Guard just even for a single turn can be super helpful. And then Tornadus is Substitute plus Protect, so this combination can allow you to slowly stall out Trick Room as well. But generally, I get really nervous when I see Trick Room in Team Preview, especially because 
let's say those teams that have trick room but are hybrid teams where they don't necessarily need to set up trick room immediately often feel compelled to lead in a way to try to deny that trick room but then if they conserve it for the back that can be really difficult to deal with so that's one thing that's given me a lot of trouble one thing that's also given me trouble is just the accuracy of moves with this team. There are a lot of times where you rely on hitting Rock Slide, hitting Ice Cold Crash, and hitting Bleak Wind Storm, and these Pokemon just don't have that much bulk to work with, so a single miss can really set you back when using this team, and that's something to consider as well. How do I play so that I don't necessarily have to rely on these moves hitting, or can I put myself in a position where I can click the 100% accurate move like Dire Claw, Close Combat, and Crunch instead of the Ice Cold Crash or the Rock Slide, for example? But I think a lot of the games that I've lost with uh, in practice have been to just me missing crucial attacks. I think another thing to think about is that there are a fair amount of Pokemon that can wall your sweepers, right? So for example, Armor Rouge going up against dark Pokemon in general can be really annoying, whether it just be Dark Terra or seeing dark type Pokemon in team preview, things like Chien Pao, Chi Yu, for example, because it just means that expanding force is way less effective. And so when you're using the Armor Rouge, one thing to consider is if I can eliminate those dark type Pokemon early, then Armor Rouge can come out and just get so much value out of expanding force. So that's something to be careful about. Sneasler, for example, very good type coverage, but you really struggle against things like Golden Go. For example, Golden Go that does not Terra can completely wall this Sneasler and Nasty Plot in front of you. So you have to really be careful about your matchup against that uh, because if you have sneezer out in the field it feels really bad to give up the unburdened psychic seed combination but if you don't have say like armor or champau putting on offensive pressure the sneezer is just completely walled for something like urshifu obviously rocky helmet users can be quite annoying things like grass type pokemon like rillaboom and amoongus can be annoying as well and so you're gonna want to be careful about that Champau here does not have Focus Sash like most players are used to, so as a result, it may faint in just one hit, and you have to be extra careful about that. And Tornadus here not having bulk means that it is more vulnerable to just getting knocked out quicker. So those are all some things to keep in mind. I think with Armor Rouge in particular as well, keep in mind that you don't have Protect, which you might be used to having on a Pokemon like this. So those are all some weaknesses that I've run into while using this team, but let's get into the games. Okay, we've got... The team that, or it's not the exact team, but a team that's very similar to the team that Jamie Boyd used to finish top four at the Toronto Regional Championships. The only difference is that that team had the regular Grass Ogre Pawn with Razor Claw for increased crits and Swords Dance. That team had, I think it was Assault Vest Thunder's T Choice Band on the Hisuian Arcanine sub. Mystic Water slash Splash Play Urshifu. Nasty Plot Golden Go. And then a supportive Rory Moon. So what do I want to lead with? I think Roaring Moon setting up Tailwind's a little bit scary. Tornadus can counteract that. A Roaring Moon Thunderous lead seems really scary. Sneasler is really good, but has to worry about Intimidate as well as Golden Go, just in general. I don't mind Tornadus, Champau, NDD Sneasler. This makes me a little bit more Golden Go weak, though, so that's my primary concern. I'd love to actually force a Terra out of Golden Go. Otherwise, Champau can threaten Golden Go with pretty good offense as well. So, the other mode I was considering was simply just um, Urshifu Armor Rouge with NED and Sneasler in the back, but I think Speed Booster Rory Moon is really rough to go up into with Armor Rouge specifically. And they do lead with the Rory Moon, yeah. Okay, so I'm alright with this. Um, pretty easy to just Tailwind plus Icicle Crash on turn one. The other interesting debate is whether or not I even click Tailwind. I could just go for Bleak Wind Storm here instead. I think Ogre Pong going for a Terra makes a lot of sense. You know, I actually think going for Substitute and Protect turn 1 is pretty interesting, because if I were them, I would try to set up Tailwind. I think there's a chance that they ignore Tornadus and target down Champau, so then next turn I can go for something like Tailwind. They're going to go for Terra here, so that makes me think it's just the Water Terra immediately on uh, Ogre Palm, but no, it's actually on Roaring Moon. Okay. Into Poison. Okay. I don't mind that. 
That Terra now means that I can't deal super effective damage anymore. And unfortunately, I, I didn't bring the uh, Armor Rouge, but I think that's okay. Oh, great. They just go for Breaking Swipe. Okay. I wonder if that even breaks the Substitute on Torn. Let's see. Okay, it does. This Tornadus is not bulky, so it's not a super big surprise. But they end up just clicking Ivy Cudgel, so that's fine. We bait out the Terra, which is the most important part of all of that. I think what's interesting here, though, is that, like, do you just click Breaking Swipe again? Because I'm compelled to just click Bleak Wind Storm now. And Ice School Crash. Mm. Crunch is a little bit weaker, but doesn't have to deal with the accuracy. Okay, I'm down to Crunch and Ogre Pond. And Bleak Wind. They do go for Tailwind this time around, though, but that's fine. Ivy Cudgel into Champau. Yep, we survive. Cool. I get Crunch. Oh my gosh, that did so much damage. Crash might have just gotten the KO there, honestly. Bleak Wind is going to miss here on the Roaring Moon. But that's fine. I've staggered Tailwind by a turn right now, and I have NDD plus Sneasler in the endgame, which I think is really good. My main question is, what do you bring out right now? But I think this next turn I can just pretty easily go protect Champau and like Tailwind with Tornadus. Or does he even just double protect? The Sue and Arcanine comes out, which is fine. I think I'd like to switch Champau out into NDD right now. They still have three turns of Tailwind. Protect. Switch into NDD. Then I can go for Tailwind. So I've staggered Tailwind pretty substantially, which is good. And I think this is going to likely be a Rock Terra late game Sneasler endgame. So this next turn, for example, I can go for Tailwind and Psy Shock onto the Roaring Moon slot. Tornadus protects. And they go for knockoff, okay, onto the torn slot, which is fine. Would have been pretty scary into NDD there, and just rock slide. Cool, that works. They actually miss NDD as well. I think I could Psy Shock here. I'm worried about NDD fainting to the knockoff combo though. So I think here I'm going to give up the Tornadus, set up Tailwind, and then just protect with the NDD. And I want Tornadus to faint, so then I get a free switch into Sneasler, and I can just go Rock Terra, Rock Slide, Helping Hand. So we've staggered Tailwind pretty significantly in this battle, which is really good in enabling the late game Sneasler. Knockoff goes into NDD. It's going to fail. We don't want Rock Slide to miss right now. We want it to connect and knock out Tornadus, ideally. Let's see. Okay, good. It hits. Perfect. Knocks us out. Excellent. Grants me the free switch in. So, let's now go out into Sneasler. And I think at this point, I am happy to just go for the Terra with Sneasler. I think we also have to consider what is in the back for my opponent. It could be Thunderous Therian. It could be Golden Go. Golden Go is probably the scariest option, but with us having Champau, it's not that bad. Or it could be Urshifu. With last turn of Tailwind on there, and we have three turns of Tailwind to work with. So I think I'm happy to just Terra, Rock Slide, and Helping Hand here. This also gives us the chance to flinch. I'm mainly curious if NDD, or sorry, Arcanine consider switching out, which it does, yeah. And that's Thunderous, so Sneasler should just win us this endgame. Beautiful. Now, Thunderous as a bring makes a lot of sense, because if you look at our team... Thunderous, for example, can threaten a one-hit knockout onto the Urshifu, but yeah, this is just a perfectly positioned Sneasler at this point. Excellent. Really hope we don't miss here. This is a big turn. But Rock Slide double connect, so we get the Rock boost as well as the Helping Hand boost, and that's just a one-hit knockout onto Thunderous. Brilliant. So that faints. They probably go for Breaking Swipe here, maybe knock off onto NDD, but we actually even get a flinch. 
that's one of the things that makes this Sneasler so deadly. Like, not only is Rock Slide such good damage in the late game, but the ability to flinch is also just phenomenal. So, they'll bring out Hisu and Arcanine, but should be Choice Band Hisu and Arcanine on that side. So, what that means is here I can just go for Close Combat and Helping Hand. Clear that, and then it's a 3v1 against Roaring Moon. So, here's Helping Hand. We get Close Combat off, that's super effective, and that's a one-hit KO. Amazing. So much about this team is enabling these late-game Sneasler sweeps, and Sneasler... I think when people see this Pokemon, a lot of people use it in the early game because, of course, you can just lead any Sneasler and deal a lot of damage. But the problem with that is, like, a single Intimidate really goes a long way. We played the game to the point where we got rid of a lot of their resources, so even though they were able to bring out Arcanine, like, we were able to get a one-hit knockout on Slothundrus that turn, right? So, yeah. I'm happy to just go for Dire Claw here and Psyshock. Yeah, my opponent just ends up forfeiting. So, ultimately, I think what was huge for us in this battle was baiting out the Terra on turn 1, being able to knock out the Ogre Pawn on turn 2, and then going from there. One thing that I think could have been pretty scary is if Ivy Cudgel went into the Tornado slot rather than Shampao, because I, I greeted my Tailwind a little bit in this battle. So, on turn 2 of the game, if they had actually targeted Tornadus instead, that would have been pretty bad. I was hoping to bait out Tailwind plus Ivy Cudgel into Shampao on turn 1, so then I get an extra turn of Tailwind on turn 2. And if they didn't click Breaking Swipe, for example, and went for the play, I was expecting the Substitute would have really paid off dividends, but in the end, it still ended up working out okay. And then I think the other turn is when they tried to go for the knockoff onto Tornadus. If that had gone into NDD, things could have gotten a little bit dicier as well. So, uh, the lack of both of those targets made the game, I think, substantially easier for me but yeah also if they had brought for example golden go or urshifu over thunderous therian as their final pokemon we might have had a little bit more trouble i think golden go would have been fine since i would have been able to just crunch it anyway with the champau in the end game uh, urshifu would have been a little bit tougher but with follow me support from indity and rocky helmet as well as a champau and a sneezer like an outspeed it i don't think it was too much of a problem so yeah sneezler with this team is so incredible in the late game Okay, this is the team that Paul Chua used to get second at the Toronto Regional Championship, so the last two teams we faced have been very relevant in the meta recently. Toronto was the most recent regionals that had taken place from the time I'm recording this video. So we've got Fluttermane, Roaring Moon, Amoongus, Heatran, Iron Hands, and Landorus Therian. So there are a lot of different ways we could approach this. One approach that I like is just simply the Urshifu plus Armor Rouge lead with Indity and Sneasler in the back. I do think Champau is a pretty excellent pick in this one as well, but it doesn't have Sacred Sword. I think Tornadus is decent because it pressures Amoongus with Bleak Wind, but the idea behind the Armor Rouge Urshifu lead, which is kind of the go-to lead with this team, is that you threat in with so many different combinations. Water, Terra, Surging Strikes immediately. You turn into Armor Rouge to activate the weak armor into NDD, then go for the Expanding Force as another option. That can be particularly valuable against Amoongus, for example. And Water or Shifu Surging Strikes actually is really strong in this matchup, right? If my opponent leads Landers or Heatran, both of those are threatened by it immediately, as well as Flutter Main, if it's not Speed Booster Flutter. And Sneasler is also a really effective late game option, especially if we knock out Landorus. Once Landorus is intimidated, you can't go for Intimidates anymore. But it does feel a little bit weird dropping Champau in this battle because I think its offensive capabilities are phenomenal, right? And with Poison Terra, it can just simply Poison Terra and get a one-hit knockout onto Fluttermane. So it is really worth considering. Also because it has a phenomenal matchup into Roaring Moon, into Amoongus as well, and Landorus. So I think you can make a very good argument for it, but I want to commit to this mode for this battle. They're going to go with Roaring Moon as well as the Heatran, okay? Interesting. Hmm, Roaring Moon is, I would say, the bigger threat to me right now. I could see Heatran pivoting out into Amoongus. I want to just close combat Roaring Moon. I could see them going for Flying Terra. And just Acrobatics onto my side. Yeah, I'm going to close combat and Armor Cannon into Roaring Moon. Because I really want that out of the way. And I think Heatran right now is in a weird spot. I could see them switching out. 
Best case would be Heatran pivots out into the Amoongus, and then Roaring Moon doesn't Terra, and we just close combat, one hit KO it. But this also works. Okay, Heatran just protects. Sure. Yeah, this is beautiful from Scarf Urshifu. Bye bye. <laughs> nice. Yeah, like this lead is so un unbelievably oppressive. We had so many options I could have gone for, right? For example, Water Terra Surging Strikes into Heatran. Protecting there is also a fascinating option because it doesn't stop me from surging strikes into that slot. So that's why I thought my opponent was more or less forced to Terra with Heatran or switch out, but ends up working out okay. The armor cannon onto Roaring Moon was to just try to eliminate it because the immunity to the... The immunity to the um, expanding force is kind of annoying. So I could grass Terra Armor Rouge right now, which I think is really strong. Yeah, I, I'm honestly happy to just go for... Let's see, I think like a Fairy Terra Heatran this turn makes sense, and you could Rage Powder or Protect. So I don't mind pivoting into NDD right now, Grass Terra, and Expanding Force. The Grass Terra just means that you can't spore me anymore. Switching out gets rid of my defense and special defense drop, which is really good. And I... I mean, maybe you don't Terra the Heatran here, right? But if you don't Terra, then the late game Urshifu Terra is looking really strong from my end as well. So this is why I wanted to prioritize knocking out Rory Moon. And Close Combat plus Armor Cannon basically covered for anything they could have switched into. Other than, I guess, maybe Flutter Main? Everything's taking at least, like, 50%. So now we get some strong expanding forces. I'd love to see a Heatran Terra here, but might be Amoongus going for it. Heatran ter Terra into Fairy would be the absolute dream right now. But it is Amoongus. Water Terra, maybe? Yeah. So I also thought about staying in and just clicking close combat into Amoongus plus expanding force, but I think setting up the terrain here is nice, because now it means that I have a better win condition into Heatran in this late game. That does so much damage. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and they just overpower power us. Perfect. Grass Terra is the perfect Terra to have here. And they spore into Indity, but that's fine. I don't really care for that. Cool. And it is leftover C trans, so could be substitute. Normally you run Earth Power, Heat Wave, Protect, and then potentially Flash Cannon. But this is why I wanted to prioritize getting rid of the Rory Moon, because Expanding Force just does so much damage at this point, right? So I think the main debate is whether or not I want to switch out NDD, but I think we're in a good spot to just burn a turn of sleep right now. I could go back into Urshifu. But I think burning a turn of sleep here is fine. Yeah, I'm just going to Expanding Force and burn this turn. Amoongus protects, which is fine. It's like, with this Grass Terror, your Heatran just doesn't really threaten me, right? So this was kind of the perfect Pokemon to have in this spot. And I'm happy to just continue chipping away at Heatran. So that a single close combat from either Urshifu or the Sneasler can finish off Heatran. Okay, they go for Heat Wave. That's smart. I do think, yeah, part of me forgot about the fact that we don't have Flash Fire anymore. So I was like, oh, I'm in a super safe position. But this is still totally fine. Because now I get a free switch in. And I think with this switch in, I would personally like to go into the... Sneasler. What I? Does Close Combat just KO Amoongus from this range? Yeah, I think that turn was actually a little bit greedy by me. I think switching NDD out would have been better. I mean, I could have gone for Wide Guard in that spot, too. So I think I would have preferred making a switch there. Um, Urshifu or Sneasler here. I'll go into Sneasler. Should be Rocky Helmet Amoongus on the opposing side. We get the special defense boost. You just protected. I think here I'm happy to... I just don't know if a close combat from Sneezer actually KOs Amoongus, which is my concern. So I think I'd prefer to Psyshock Amoongus here and then burn a turn of sleep again with Inidi. 
But they switch out, which makes sense. I think Lander is coming in here. Checks out. Oh, it's Iron Hands. Even better. Okay, nice. So that Psy Shock works out perfectly for us. Let's see. If Heatran protects her, I think we're in super good shape. Beautiful. Yeah, now I just close combat that slot. You don't have Intimidate. And we'll see if Indy wakes up here. Still stays asleep. That's fine. Okay, Heatran has leftovers, obviously. I'm happy to now just go for Follow Me and close combat into Heatran. I think that one turn with Arm Rouge where I got knocked out by Heat Wave, I'm not sure what I really would have done differently there. Like maybe Gendur or Wide Guard to burn turns for NDD. Because NDD is actually really good in this matchup with redirection support as well as Psy Shock support. Like imagine if I wake up there, right? I just deal like 40% to Iron Hands. But now I get a free close combat off. So, NDD does manage to wake up. And I think with that, this should secure the game up for us. Because we'll knock out the Heatran. And I don't think you have enough offense in this late game. Although, they will get Regenerator up with the Amoongus. So, they'll heal back a little bit more. But that's fine. Because Iron Hand shouldn't knock us out. If you Wild Charge, you take so much recoil damage as well. And then I can just go for Close Combat plus Psy Shock onto Iron Hands. It's going to be Drain Punch instead. Okay, that's fine. Yep, yeah, and you need a Brocky Helmet damage. Cool. So they bring Amoongus back out. I think my main question here is... I would like to just go for Psy Shock onto Iron Hands and Close Combat onto it. Yeah, I'm happy with that. If Amoongus protects, this double up I think likely just gets the knockout. They don't protect. We get close combat off. Ooh, is there any chance they survive Psy Shock here? That could be ugly. Let's see. Okay, nice. Being able to ignore that Assault Vest essentially is so huge. Yeah, and they Spore, but now it's too late. So you can see how Sneasler can just be so oppressive into so many comps, right? And this team can deter a lot of those Intimidators away. Like, my opponent, of course, has Landorus, but they didn't bring it. And part of the reason is probably, be, you know, they, they see an Urshifu, they see a Champau. So, yeah, now I'm happy to just protect and burn a turn of sleep here. And we've got Urshifu in the back as well, so my opponent recognizes not much they can do. I think critically in this game, them having Iron Hands in the back rather than Landorus made the game a lot easier. I feel like in this match, if Landorus has switched in that turn, it gets pretty awkward because you do get an Intimidate onto us and you have Earthquake Pressure. But one of the marks of good team building is when you have certain Pokemon that scare away threats to what is like one of the most dominant Pokemon in your team, right? So you can once again see how effective Sneasler can be in these endgame situations where it gets the speed boost, it has support from NDD as well and can just deal massive amounts of damage. So, yeah, I think the one thing I'm considering in this game was that Grass Tear on the Armor Rouge. Like, I did it to cover for a potential Spore from Amoongus. If Amoongus didn't tear in that position, would have just fainted. They didn't Rage Powder that turn as well, so I could have actually just clicked Close Combat into Heatran. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, it still ended up working out okay. Um, but I think, yeah, what would have been dicey is I didn't know what my opponent's last one is, and them having Iron Hands made it a lot easier for us. But late game Sneezler once again comes through for us. Okay, Torn Lando, Chiyu, Water Ogre Pond, Hands, and Flutter for this one. Chiyu's pretty annoying for the Armor Rouge. If we eliminate Chiyu, the Armor Rouge actually becomes incredible. I could see something like a Torn Water Ogre Pond lead from their end. I think I kind of like just Torn plus Champau here. Hmm. Oh, all of our Pokemon are so good in this one. Torn Champau is kind of weak into like Iron Hand stuff. Maybe I just don't bring Armor Rouge because of Chiyu being such a big threat. It just feels a little bad. Could be Torn Shampoo into the Sneasler. Alright, I'm down for the Sneasler. So the general idea behind this lead is I want to match their Tailwind. And with by matching their Tailwind, like the Sneasler just becomes such a big threat, right? Because you just can't outpace it. 
Sneasler with Rock Terror has a really good matchup into Tornadus as well. Cool. It is Torn Ogre Pond. Nice. I will gladly take that. This is really interesting, though, because I actually think what I could do turn one... Uh, I mean, I should probably just trade Tailwinds here. I'm just thinking about clicking Bleak Wind Storm. Hmm. Okay. I'm actually going to take an interesting approach in this one. I'm going to Terra turn one, Bleak Wind Storm, and switch out into Indie. I know that seems kind of wild, but basically, by going for Terra, I can survive. A Ivy Cudgel from Ogre Pond, even if it Terra's. I Bleak Wind Storm just does meaningful damage because of Tornadus' item here. And then by bringing out the Indidi, I set up Psychic Terrain. So by setting up Psychic Terrain, what that means is next turn, you can't haunt me. And the reason I'm doing this is because I specifically want to stagger my Tailwind by a turn in this battle. Or maybe even two turns. Right, and so it means that I can go into the late game with an incredible amount of speed. So I would expect Water Terra Ogre Pond here. Yeah. And I would expect either Tailwind Ivy Cudgel or Follow Me Tailwind. Could be Follow Me Bleak Wind as well, that would be interesting. Yeah, good. So they Tailwind, which is fine. The Water Terra here covers for their Ogre Pond, like I mentioned. And they do indeed go for Ivy Kajo here. Okay, and it's gonna go into Indy, which is fine. Does not get the knockout onto us. And Bleak Wind double connects. Look how much damage that does. Oh my goodness. Sweet. Okay, given that then, now I'm happy to go for. I could just double protect this turn, honestly. I stalled another turn of their tailwind. Landorus. Like, what do I expect in the back? Chi Yu for sure. But they committed their Terra, so this is looking a lot stronger. You could just Bleak Wind and go for a Grass-type attack onto Tornadus here. Okay, I'm happy double protecting. Torn protects. NDD protects. Horn Leech, okay. Oh, that's actually a big deal because what we just saw there is confirming that Ogre Pond is faster than the Tornadus. What that means I can do is click Bleak Windstorm again here and just follow me. At the end of the day, I think the, you know, Tornadus Terra is questionable, but I just wanted to make sure that I survived turn one, and I wanted to, wanted to cover for Ogre Pond tar targeting that slot. Okay, so they take Rocky Helmet damage. So basically what I'm setting up for is I set up Tailwind and then go into the late game where I just completely outpace your team. Uh, Bleak Wind actually misses from there, but it wouldn't have gotten the knockout. And our Bleak Wind connects. Cool. This is perfect. So now I get in the Sneasler. And now, I've staggered Tailwind very substantially, right? I think my main question is a Landorus switch in is potentially imminent right now. Last turn of Tailwind on their end. I'm happy to finally click Tailwind on my end. And Rock Slide. I think what I'm probably worried about most is Tornadus on their end switching out into Landorus, but they don't, so that's good. Or missing Rock Slide here. Okay, at least it, it's on Torn and not the Ogre Pond. But 
Yeah, that would have been an amazing turn for us, right? I, I just get a double knockout and take no damage in return. Uh, now the annoying thing is their Tornadus can set up another Tailwind next turn. Yeah, that's really frustrating, but... <laughs> and we get crit, my goodness. And a speed drop. <laughs> oh my goodness. Rock Slide miss into double Bleak Windstorm hit into crit into speed drop. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. They bring Chiyu out. I, mean, I still have the Unburdened Speed Boost here, so... I'm happy to just Bleak Wind and Rock Slide here, I think. And I want a Rock Slide to cover for Sash Chiyu. Chiyu just protects, okay? Uh, I could have set up a sub there with my Torn. Man, I can't believe the sequence of events that happened there. Wow. The most important thing is to try to not tilt right now, but definitely frustrating. Torn faints. Because it's like, I spent all this work to stagger Tailwind and to knock out Torn on the last turn, so I'd have full speed control going into this end game, but... Sometimes Rock Slide just doesn't want to help you out, but we can still win. Like, we're still in okay shape here. Is it Speed Booster Flutter? We don't see a booster. Okay. My other question is, are you sashed here on Chiyu? Mm, this probably dazzling gleams, right? Like I think I want to protect here and close combat. Yeah, so much had to go wrong for us in order to lose this one, but I mean we're we're still in a potential position to win, so I don't want to obviously give up yet. And it's Sash to you, yeah. Oh. They gleam. Ah, <sighs> I mean, what could I have done in that spot? I think it's probably just Specs Gleam from Flutter, right? So, oh no, it's Life Orb. Okay. Wait, hold on. I also have Tailwind, and this is Jolly Champau. So we might be okay. Because we're max speed on both Mons right now. Last turn of Tailwind, two turns of Tailwind on your end. It's Jolly Max Speed. I think the odds of, like, very few people run Timid Max Speed Flutter these days. So, I think we can just Bleak win here and Ice Skull Crash. Okay. If I don't lose a Speed Tie, potential Speed Tie hit Ice Skull Crash, we just win. They're Timid Max Speed. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's that's one of those games where you lose and you're just like, how did that happen? I mean, I could have gone like sub protect to stall another turn of Tailwind. It doesn't make a difference though. Wow, the fact that they were timid max speed flutter, that's not a common EV spread these days. Like most people don't run that benchmark because admin shampoo is so meta. So it's like we missed the rock slide, we had the speed drop on Sneezler. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, I'm not sure if like the speed drop or the crit really mattered. It was mainly just missing Rock Slide that turn on Tornadus. Because, like, if we have speed control in this endgame, we just win, right? I just overwhelm my opponent with offense. And it was the fact they had that plus Focus Sash Chiyu plus losing a speed tie here in the end. So, sometimes everything just doesn't go in your favor. But I don't really regret how I played that too much. I do think the Water Terra on turn 1, like, I took an interesting approach in this game. A much more conservative approach rather than just launching offense. Because I actually put on a lot of pressure with damage right from turn 1, right? And I could have potentially conserved my Terra for something else. Like, if I had conserved Terra, I would have been able to poison Terra, the Chimpao, in that endgame, and we would, would have been able to win the uh, win the game. So, I'm not sure the Water Terra on Tornadus was really necessary, especially because it's likely that Ogre Pond targets down the Champau slot, but 
That being said, it's like if the Rock's Eye just connected on Tornadus there, I think the game is just immediately over because then it's a double knockout. You don't have speed control. I've set up Tailwind. And then I just go for like Bleak Wind Storm plus Rock Slide, for example, right? Plus I have Chen Pao waiting to come out in the back. But the fact that they were actually timid Max Speed Flutter and won the speed tie makes me so sad. Because <laughs> I was like, even after all that, we could have won the game, but then we lost the speed tie as well. But that's Pokemon for you sometimes. Okay. Hisu and Zora Arc Trick Room. Oh, this is going to be a tough matchup for us. Um, this is super similar to some of the really hard Trick Room teams I featured a few months ago. I'll link the videos down in the description below if you want to check them out. Essentially, it's really hard to deny Trick Room from something like a Mouse Hold or Bruxish plus a Ranguru lead. Those are the... Like, uh, Bruxish plus Mouse Hold and a Ranguru plus Bruxish are the two leads. Or sorry, a Ranguru plus Mouse Hold are the two leads we really want to show respect to. The solution is not letting them get a free switch in and not KOing Mouse Hold on turn 1. If I were them, I would... Okay, I think I want to go Tornadus Chimpao. NDD. Armor Rouge. Hard Trick Room is going to be one of the hardest matchups for this team. So, I'm going to try to get around it, but we have to play really well to win here. And, you know, it's not a very common archetype, so sometimes you just accept that you don't have the best matchup against it. There's a reason why this team finished number two and six on the ladder, right? And even though it's a tough matchup, we can still win. A lot of it revolves around turn one, though. Roxish and Ranger. I think Mousehold is one of those two. Sorry, not Mousehold. Um, Zorark is. Hmm. I would love to just crunch here and bleak windstorm. This is such a hard turn one to play because I have no idea who's going to Terra and I don't know if one of these two are Zoroark. Ah, and it's Dark Terra on Orangru. Okay. Could have gone Ice Core Crash Bleak Wind instead then to cover for Terra. Almost knocked out the Bruxish. Wow. Yeah, it's Zorark. That makes sense. Hyper Voice Trick Room. Nope. Knock off. Okay. Okay, it could be worse. Um... Do you switch in Bruxish now is the question, because you can switch it in to prevent Ice Shard, but no one ever per expects Ice Shard, but they expect Sucker Punch is the thing, right? Okay, we know there's a Bruxish in the back as well, given the Zorark confirmation. The Terra. I'd personally switch in Bruxish right now if I were them. Okay, I'm gonna double protect. They didn't switch it in. Whoa. Oh my goodness. Okay. And a Ranger just protected, huh? Super risky play. They try to U-turn out. Hmm, interesting. Okay, I'm gonna... So it's it's physical Zorark, then. You don't even have Hyper Voice. So maybe I don't need to be that scared. Like, I'm, I'm willing to Ice Shard here and actually just Bleak Windstorm again. They don't switch out. That's wild. I just get a double KO here, potentially. It could be Foul Play onto Torn, though, right? Yeah. 
Psychic, does that KO? Nice. Okay, Bleak Wind connects. Ooh, doesn't get the knockout there. Wow, even single target. One could argue that actually benefits us, though, because it doesn't give you two free switch-ins. They bring out Blood Moon, Kyle. I mean, there's only two turns of Trick Room left, which is obviously really good for us. I think we s sacrifice NDD here. So, like, I think this turn I'm happy to just double protect. Hmm, good switch. I like that by them. Just don't know the items right now, which is a little bit annoying, but... I think double protect and then switch Cham Pao into Entity, and I have a late game of Armor Rouge plus Cham Pao, which looks really good here. And you don't- you can't Terra anymore. Yeah. Okay. We switch Champ out into Indity now. I'm not even going to bother going for the double protect, because I actually want Tornadus to feign to get a free switch in. I want both of our Pokemon to feign right now, ideally. I think my primary concern right now is that my opponent gets a second Trick Room up in this battle with the Bruxish. Okay, they clicked Aqua Jet. Instead of wave crash. Hmm. Life or blood moon. Trick room expires. I mean, I go into champ power right now. I have crunch, right? Like, I want to just follow me here, and then crunch into Bruxish. Could protect here, though. No protect. Okay. Are you sashed? Huge. I think that wins us the game. No, not necessarily. Mm, no, I think it's... Ooh, no, because you're Dark Terra. Ugh. And they Hyper Voice. Oh, the Dark Terra is actually so annoying, isn't it? Okay. I never really got a chance to Terra in this battle either. Yeah, like just missing that KO stung. Because if that were knocked out, I'd just go Helping Hand Expanding Force and it's just game over. Having Sash here is huge though. It's just a question of does it protect like do either of these protect because you could try to trick room right now or protect right like i want to protect armor cannon here but there's a ranger protect <sighs> let's see this is so stressful Nice. Okay, they don't protect. That's game over then with Focus Sash. But I had to call, like, two turns against Bruxish and Orangru and as to whether or not they'd protect. We actually managed to successfully sell out Trick Room, though, which was unexpected in this one. I think it should be over. I mean, I don't see how you survive Helping Hand expanding for single target in Psychic Terrain. Let me go for Blood Moon there. I don't know if Protect on Indy was necessary either, but yeah, because they were Dark Terra, it meant that I actually needed to get a big turn off there. But now I can just Helping Hand and Expanding Force. You probably just Protect here, right? Stall it a turn of terrain. They just, did they not have Protect on anything? Like, they never clicked Protect once. But we delivered the finishing blow there with just, what, like 5 HP to spare in the end? That was really intense. I think turn one of this game was just so hard to play because I had no idea which one of those two would be Zoroark, and that's what makes it really strong. But I think what limited my opponent is their turn one play. 
by going for knockoff rather than U-turn and then their turn two play, they were not able to get the Blood Moon in quickly enough. And as a result, we were actually able to effectively stall out Trick Room. If they had just clicked U-turn on turn one, set up Trick Room with a Rangru, you just bring out Blood Moon and start clicking Hyper Voice and then Instruct. Now, we did have one way to kind of stall out the Hyper Voice, which was the Wide Guard Armor Rouge that I had in the back. So it wasn't like it was just going to be completely over immediately. But the fact that we were able to stall out two turns of Trick Room early on was really huge. And I think the lack of Orangru switching into Bruxish to block Ice Shard for me to KO Zorark was also a really big deal. Ice Shard obviously isn't very common on Shen Pao, but Sucker Punch is. So I was surprised to not see the Dazzling come out. Uh, and as a result, that made the game easier for us as well. But yeah, the Orangru hanging out with one HP made it more challenging because if we get that knockout earlier, then it's harder for them to uh you know threading with the late game trick room setup but i think if either bruxish or orangru protect on the turns i just ko them i probably just lose the game there so fortunately made the right calls there i'm not sure if they had protect but most of the time you do um but the lack of protect made it easier for us here okay we've got bax caliber golden go rillaboom urshifu hisun arcanine and torn for this one hmm so they have rillaboom which is a problem for ndd stuff and they have Golden Go, which completely walls the Sneasler. What would I lead if I were my opponent? Torn Rillaboom. Torn Golden Go. Mm. It's one of those matches where everything on our end is good, but I'm not sure what's best. I think Tornadus Armor Rouge is actually quite interesting, though. Armor Rouge Entity Sneasler. The main weakness to this is not bringing Champao, which has Crunch and Ice Cold Crash Pressure. But I'm kind of down for this. I think because of the Sash on Armor Rouge, we can trade really positively with it. The main thing to think about by locking into these four is that I'm really Golden Go weak if they don't Terra. Like, let's say Armor Rouge faints early and they haven't committed their Terra, Golden Go just sweeps me. So I have to be very careful about that. But it's going to be Torn Urshifu, which I'm okay with. Hmm. Yeah, this is super interesting right away. We could just trade Tailwinds here. I think the play I want to make is Tailwind. Terra into grass. I guess they could just bleak win though, which would be really annoying. Ben expanding force. The hope here is that they click Tailwind and then just surging strikes into Arm Rouge and then they just activate weak armor a couple times, right? And then I just completely outpace my opponent going into the second turn of the game. They don't Terra or Switch. I get my Tailwind up. I'm really hoping to see them Tailwind as well. Or like Taunt. Cool. That works. Okay. We get Expanding Force off now into Urshifu. Single target. That's actually just a one-hit KO. Nice. Waste of a Terra in the end, but I don't mind going for that because it covers for Focus Ash Urshifu. And it also covered for Tailwind on their end, plus them attacking into the Armor Rouge slot. Golden Go pivots in now, which is fine. So you can go for a Tailwind of your own. I'm happy to just Bleak Windstorm here, and then Armor Cannon into Tornadus. I think Golden Go protecting or terroring here makes sense, and I'd be very happy to see a Terra, because then it enables Sneasler in the endgame. But I think it's really risky to bring out Golden Go and not Terra here, so yeah, they're going to go for it. And that's fine. It's probably Dragon Terra, but now it means that Sneasler can hit it. Perfect. Works for me. Curious if they Nasty Plot, make it rain or Shadow Ball here. But we've traded Tailwinds, but I have the speed advantage still because we're just using fast Pokemon, so I'm okay with that. Bleak Wind double connects, which is amazing for us here. Does a lot of damage here onto both. And I get Armor Cannon to just eliminate Tornadus. Cool. The main thing to think about in this matchup right now is that my opponent has staggered their Tailwind by a turn, but we have been off to a really strong start here, so I'll gladly take it. Okay, and they Nasty Plot, perfect. Are you Leftovers now is my question. Yep. I'm hoping their last one is Rillaboom, because if so, I can just pivot in into Indy D and just change terrain. 
beautiful. Wow, this game could not have played out any more perfectly for us, honestly. Sick. Let's just double check the board state. Three turns of Tailwind, two turns on our end. Taunted here as well. I think it's a free pivot into Indy D right now, and then just expanding force. I could armor cannon. Maybe that's worth it if it's a guaranteed knockout onto Assault Vest Rillaboom, but I'd rather just get guaranteed damage onto both right now. Especially because um, we have Sneasler in this endgame. Golden Gold protects, even better. Now I can just Helping Hand Expanding Force next turn. Beautiful. And I think this team has a pretty significant edge against a lot of these Tailwind teams because you have Max P Tornadus and you actually deal so much damage with it. They U-turn, which is beautiful as well, because now you just give me a speed boost. Very nice. Okay, perfect. I think I can just Helping Hand Expanding Force here. And I think that probably picks up the double knockout, but let's see. Okay, <laughs> my opponent will give me the chance to find out, but... Uh... I feel like it should do enough to get the KOs there. So, yeah. You can see how quickly this team can dominate, right? Like, you can snowball knockouts very quickly, and there's so many different lead combinations. And I think what gives you a really big edge is being able to outspeed your opponent in so many scenarios, right? So it's like, yes, we're going up against the Tornadus with Tailwind, and yes, they stagger their Tailwind by a turn, but there's so many ways that we can just be faster than our opponent because we have max speed tornadoes we have the sneezler with unburden as well as armorage with the weak armors if weak armor gets activated at any point it becomes really strong uh and sneezler was also going to be a really effective late game closer for us in that battle and i think what hurt my opponent is that you have tornadoes out you didn't tail one on the first turn that taunt essentially accomplished nothing I can see why they went for taunt, because if you are faster and you go first and get that taunt off, it's actually super good because you maintain speed control, but and then you just overwhelm you know my side of the field with offense, but with us having max speed tornadoes, it's not something I have to worry about nearly as much, which is nice. Okay, there's a Sizzler as well as a Milotic here, which is really cool to see, but if they're not Dark Urshifu, I feel like the Armor Rouge Expanding Force here can clear this team super quickly. So I'm down for Urshifu Armor Rouge in this one with Indy and Sneasler. This is such a fun core of four. I think the Tornadus also is actually a really valuable bring because one, like we get to match their Tailwind and two, uh, Bleak Wind Storm actually does really significant damage, especially into Moongus and Urshifu, but also Sizzle or Tornadus. One of the things to consider though is if I bring my Tornadus, Bleak Wind Storm speed drops would activate competitive on my Lodic, which I think would be a little bit awkward. My Lodic in general also a decent threat to our side of the field so we're gonna have to be careful about dealing with it but if i were my opponent i think the main lead you should probably cover for is ndd plus armor rouge and i'm not sure what their best solution to that is but let's find out with this lead we have a lot of different plays one is obviously going for the self u-turn to activate our weak armor bring in ndd and just click expanding force another possibility is to just go for water terror surging strikes for close combat. They're going to go with Arcanine and Scizor. Okay. Well, Urshifu is obviously incredibly well positioned right now. We threaten, honestly, with just like Surging Strikes onto this and Armor Cannon onto Scizor. Hmm. What do I want to go for, though? I could see Arcanine going for a Terra here, defensively, and then Scizor protecting. So honestly, I'm kind of down to go for a U-turn here and Expanding Force. Because I think right now, it doesn't make sense for you to stay in with Scizor and let me just Armor Cannon that slot. But I guess if you were like, Choice Band Arcanine, you could expect to just Terra defensively survive the turn. But Arcanine pivots, okay, maybe into Milotic. I think Arcanine pivoting into Milotic. Oh, <laughs> they go into a Moongus. Nice. Uh, the Scizor Protect here. Okay, they're not going to go for the Protect. So I could have just clicked the uh, Armor Cannon here this turn, but this is fine. I, I actually prefer to knock out a Moongus because a Moongus is actually the main counter into Urshifu right now. So this is a free switch into NDD. We set up Psychic Terrain, and now I just get Psychic Terrain boosted Expanding Force. 
Okay. And clearing Amoongus is such a big deal here because it just opens the uh, door for Water Terra on Urshifu in this end game. Doesn't knock out Amoongus though, impressively. Okay. So hangs on. And they're going to go for Lung Cheer, which actually secures the one hit knockout. But honestly, that's totally fine because now I just get a free switch in into. I think we probably should just go into the Urshifu first. Yeah. Cool. I want to potentially conserve my Terra for Sneasler or Armor Rouge. I don't think we need a Terra this turn, so I'm happy just clicking Surging Strikes into Scizor and Expanding Force. Yeah. Fortunately, Lunge went into the Indity slot rather than Armor Rouge, but I think even if Armor Rouge got KO there, Sneasler plus Urshifu is already really well positioned for the end game, just in terms of damage output. One of the beautiful things about this team is the NDD just setting up Psychic Terrain as well. So, they're going to click Rage Powder here, which is fine. We now outspeed, thanks to the weak armor. So, we just get the knockout onto Amoongus and Scizor Fane. So, that's double KO. Your Intimidate now is not going to be relevant, which is really important given the Sneasler in the back. And the question is, what is your final Pokemon? B because, like, let's say their final one is Tornadus. Well... Tornadus is good, but you need to spend a turn Tailwinding, right? And I still have Sneasler waiting as well. So, that's what's really cool about this team. You have ways to just outspeed your opponent very quickly without having to commit something like a slot for Tornadus, right? Uh, they bring out my Lodic and Arcanine. Okay, that's fine. I think with this combo for my opponent's end... I'm happy to just Surging Strikes here into Arcanine, Grass Terra, and Expanding Force. This covers for any Terra Arcanine could be... I think Arcanine should Terra here, but I don't think you survive this unless you're... Well, maybe if you're Assault Vested, you can. But I'm not going to Terra Sneasler in the endgame because Rock Terra just makes me weaker to the Milotic. So I'm fine committing the Terra to Armourouche just to survive the turn. I think we also could have gone Water Terra on the Urshifu. But I think Armourouche right now just puts on so much pressure with Expanding Force, right? So I think what was interesting about this game was primarily turn 1 because I made the decision to not click Armour Cannon into Scizor. And I decided to go for Expanding Force rather than Surging Strikes into Arcanine. It didn't work out perfectly in the sense that I was expecting Scizor to Terra there, so I was hoping to deal more damage. And uh, Amoongus surviving also was good for my opponent, but in the end, I think it should still be fine. And now we're super well positioned, right? I just have so much speed relative to my opponent. So it is Arcanine going for the Terra. And it is going to be Dragon Terra. Okay, so Dragon Terra does help out against Surging Strikes right now. But I'm still fine with that, right? Like, Expanding Force here just does so much damage. Yeah, wow. And I think Surging Strikes just gets the KO with that. Beautiful. Nice. And the Grass Terra here just protected us from either super effective water type attacks from my Lodic or super effective rock type attacks from the Arcanine slot. So we get that KO easily. A lot of Arcanines don't carry Protect these days, by the way. Like, Hisu and Arcanine really loves running either Assault Vest or Choice Band or... Sorry, not Choice Band. Uh, hey, actually, Choice Band, yeah. Assault Vest, Choice Band, and Citrus Berry. Those are all good items on that set, uh, Pokemon. So, they go for Scald, Fishing for a Burn. That's fine. I'm happy to give Sneasler a shot here, make an appearance, and just Expanding Force. At this point, Expanding Force just clears the Milotic, honestly. So, might as well pivot out, because it also allows us to change our moves to close combat. Although, Surging Strikes, Expanding Force here might have just been a KO. Okay. Now we get a single target expanding force from the Armor Rouge. Yeah, okay, that definitely would have been a KO. So we didn't need to switch there, actually. <laughs> I mean, we were so hard, far ahead in this game, but I wanted Sneezer to get a shot here. So they get the burn onto Armor Rouge, but at this point, it doesn't really matter. My Lodic is a Pokemon that can be really disruptive, but can also just provide very little value. And in this scenario, we were able to just knock out its teammates so darn quickly. So just Dire Claw and expanding force here. And I think, yeah, the main thing is turn one for this battle was such a good trade for us, right? I was able to get the knockout, or sorry, not get the knockout, but set up the Psychic Terrain, force the 
Arcanine out and deal so much damage to Amoongus. Because Amoongus, in my opinion, is actually the most annoying Pokemon for this team. Once it faints, it opens the door for everything else, right? Because it then prevents redirection. I Or I prevent redirection. And I deal a lot of damage with Sneasler plus the Urshifu. So they go for Protect here. I could have ended this game like, yeah, two turns earlier if I stayed in with Urshifu. But I didn't think Urshifu was actually going to get the knockout with Armourou. So I wanted Sneasler to deliver the finishing blow. <laughs> But terrain disappears. Still doesn't really matter though. We've already gotten our boosts. Just Dire Claw expanding force again. Okay, then we'll try a double protect and Dire Claw gets the KO. So Sneasler is such an effective late game closer with this team. You of course could lead it with Indity plus Sneasler, but I think the downside of leading it is that you are really vulnerable to Intimidate. So in this battle, if I just led Indity plus Sneasler, I get Intimidate immediately, and I don't put on that much offensive pressure, right? My opponent could easily pivot Hisu and Arcanine out into Amoongus, and that would be able to take something like a Helping Hand close combat combination. And so it's really nice to conserve Sneasler because if you're able to get rid of the Intimidators, it just does so much more damage in the end game. So it wasn't the most relevant Pokemon in this matchup, but you can see already the combination of Urshifu plus Armor Rouge. There are so many things you have to respond to if you're my opponent, right? Because I could just go for Surging Strikes and Armor Cannon on turn one. I could go for Close Combat plus Endure. I could go for Close Combat and Expanding Force. Like, a lot of different possibilities, and it's really hard to cover for all of them, which is one of the reasons why this team is so strong. Anyway, that's going to be it for this one. So thank you so much, as always, for joining me. And I hope that I've opened your eyes to the power of Sneasler. I feel like we were able to feature all of these Pokemon to pretty good success throughout the course of the episode. So I'm happy with it. And Sneasler is just not a Pokemon I really had on my radar on this format at all. And to use a team that can use it so effectively, I think, is absolutely awesome. So appreciate y'all for watching, as always. And I'll see you soon.